good thing to do me already. Um, good thing from the second. There we go. Uh, there we go. Yeah, perfect. That went light. Yeah, I think so. Here, this one will react when it wants. This goes good. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. So yeah, let's perfect. start. Let's start. Hello, welcome to the first live stream. We're here with uh, Axelord and we continue with the series we have with Firebird. Supposedly this will be our last episode. Yeah, it seems so in the, in the mm -hmm. game. I mean, you can go into the game so we can show it that. But it seems that it, this is already the, 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 the last episode because mm -hmm. uh, we are almost at the end of the map. I don't know what will happen afterwards. Let's see. But let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we continue now in our map. Yeah, and you see there's nothing, basically nothing more. This part here and a bit more to the north, not much. Talkative. They are quite and talkative today. If you don't remember, in the last episode, uh, <coughs> our friend got, was stolen by the, the evil guys. Yeah, right. This Dimitri was possessed basically by the baddest guy. And our friend... Uh, Lisa. Not Lisa. Was kidnapped by him to be yeah. offered as a, as a tribute or something, as a, as a sacrifice and now for the baddest. And now it's like us and Ivan trying to save her. Anyway, do you think the price of milk will keep going up? Piotr says we should stock up. Piotr says that the government... Ivan, I don't want to talk about food. I need a bit of quiet. But... Brains? Of course. I've completely forgotten about them. They influenced even the most well known bands. You've got a bit their only fan, Mariska. Vasilisa loves them too. Yeah, sure. Sure she does. Ivan grabs your CD from the dashboard. Stares at the case for a few seconds, lost in thought. I remember when I was a teenager. I listened to them all the time while I ate my mom's sushi. They were so good. Oh, we said we wouldn't talk about food. It's nothing. I'm the one who's sorry. It's all my fault. We'll make it, Mariska. I can prove it to you, but I'm sure we will. Let's keep going. River of Fire. The firebird seems to glide along the road. The tall pines seem strange. Something. Stop in front of a river of fire. Okay, yeah, we can now examine the river or cross the river. Examine the river first. Or cross the river without knowing what that is. Dumbfounded, you drive up to a river that passes through flight like holes in a grill. Napa? It's definitely a river snaking through the trees and cutting across the road to the north and liquid fire really does flow through it it's burning hot plants that fall into the current current are immediately consumed look upstream you drive a hundred meters before finding a strange wooden bridge 
It's made of small brown stalks. While it's wide enough to allow the firebird to pass, you get the feeling that it might break under the weight of something much lighter. Look downstream. Wait, look downstream. An ancient cobbled road appears under the grass. It leads to a moss-covered stone bridge, wide enough to allow the truck to cross. I would say... The stone bridge. Cross the... But we can also examine them both. First. Yeah, examine them both. There's a strange freeze showing guards blocking the bridge, which leads to a castle where a great king reigns. What beautiful carving! I always thought you should have studied art history, Ivan. You wonder how it's even able to stay standing. It's Gelderbos. You a botanist or something, Ivan? The old woman asked me for a gelder rose for your bath, remember? Hmm, a gelder rose bridge. Go through the wooden one. The wooden one? Why the wooden one? Because it's uh, related with the old woman. Yeah. I have also a feeling that this might be the right option. Cross the wooden bridge. Are you sure about this? No, never have been. You can stay here if you want. Ivan says nothing, but stays with you. He's brave. You slowly cross the bridge made of slim wooden stalks. It takes the weight. Yet another mystery. You get back on the road to the north. Wow, we made it. <laughs> yeah. avenues of oaks as tall as hills. And then you see it, a huge impossible structure. It rises from the landscape like a claw, 
blacker than night silhouetted against the starry sky. Oh, cliche is awesome. Yes, we can afford to wait. Let's get out of the truck. We stop in front of the castle and knock on the door. You're not alone. A crowd of spirits, knights, Soviet soldiers, shamans, men like these and shapeless specters moves in your direction. They all converge on the castle in a slow procession accompanied by solemn chants. The paved road leads right up to the castle's two open doors. You make out a huge gilded throne room. <coughs> Let's carry on. You advance through the phantoms cautiously. <coughs> <coughs> Ivan trembling with fear. <coughs> In front of you, a tall, proud looking woman with gilded male armor and a spear at her side carefully scans the crowd her eyes meet yours she says nothing she shakes her head no slightly do we know each other you stare deep into one another's eyes you do feel like you know each other somehow. Mm -hmm. We can't go any further, ma'am. No, I see there's a woman. <laughs> Everyone is invited to the king's court, but do you really want to meet him amid all his subjects? Not really, no. You are a wise young man. Is this really Cochet's castle? King Cochet's castle, I should cut off your head for such disrespect. Are you going to do it? An execution on coronation day? That would be in very bad taste, though it would please the king. You serve Cochet? He is the king and we must all serve him. You don't like crochet. You don't like crochet. You don't like crochet. We fought each other in the past. I won. Today it's his turn. Long live the king. Who are you? My name is Maria Morevna. No army can stand in my way. And tomorrow it will be I who leads the most powerful king's army to conquer the south. I can't tell you too much, otherwise I'll have to stop you for good. My last piece of advice to you, turn back now. She looks behind her nervously. Okay. It's still quite difficult, right? The second one. Is it dangerous in there? Yes, I know who you are. You smell human. They won't go easy on you in there. I advise you to flee. She resumes her position and ignores you. Help us fight Cochet. Help us fight Cochet. I cannot. I'm sorry. Now move forward. She resumes her position and ignores you. I'm looking for an egg. I'm looking for an egg. Maria sighs and looks behind the castle. Over there, there's an island. You'll find what you're looking for there. Good luck. She resumes her position and ignores you. Okay, check out the island. You escape the procession. Island. A dark river runs behind the elusive form of the castle. An island topped by a white oak lies across the river. It's completely dark. Do you have a light? You look behind. 
behind you. Turn back towards the ghost to the firebird to look for some light. No. You grit your teeth and return to the firebird. Bless you. Your flesh light is dead. You return with three expired flares, but that's all you've got. No. You're not religious, but you stammer a short prayer anyway as you break the tip of the flare to light the darkness. The dark waters part before you and you walk the island across the dry riverbed. On the island, the white oak seems to struggle against the darkness. Your flare is blinding. Light another one. Why do you want to light another one? Look at the oak, man. It says the oak is fighting against the darkness. Yeah, man, look at the oak. Look at the oak. White and skin, blinding the bright, reflecting your flare. At the heart of the trunk, a uh, device. Your flare shines brightly in the darkness, the river hisses like a snake. Such pussy bear, such a crack. Bite. You reach in, there's a, a chest, it rabbit. The chest is made of white wood carved with images of a skeleton seen on a pile of gold. Mariska, look, a king. He looks like Dimitri. Last night we can see arms with long black fingers creep towards you. I don't know one. You snap the second the second player head in the darkness. The player is blinding. Open the chest. It opens like a box. Inside is a strange sculpture, a plump wooden here. The old woman mentioned an egg. We are agreed this isn't an egg, right? She was crazy, but there's no shortage of that in this nightmare. The flare shines bright in the darkness. The river hisses like a snake. Look at the hair. Should we not light the last flare away? Not yet. Not yet. The sculpture seems to be made from walnut wood. It's flawless. This is the type of thing you might put on the mantelpiece of the summer home you'll never have. You'll never be rich and you'll probably be dead before long. Now you have to do that. like we can arms with long black fingers creep towards you. Now you have to like that last one. Come on, save us. The last flare. The flare is blinding. Speak to the hair. Help us, little hair. Great, so I'm the only sane one left now. It's your madness that keeps you so grounded. Okay, now break it. The flare shines bright in the darkness. The river hisses like a snake. Now we break it. Throw it against the tree trunk, it breaks into two, revealing a duck sculpture. A matri Yoshka. This is still not an egg. We have a duck, I guess it's closer to an egg than a hair is. The flares light weakens arms with long black fingers creep towards you. Break the duck. That's the only option we can choose. You throw it against the trunk, it breaks in two. An egg rolls to the ground. The egg! I've never been so happy to see an egg. Let's break it. No, keep it safe until we have Vasilisa. You slip it into your shirt. Leave the island. Leave the island. You venture once more into the hissing shadows, throwing your flare into the river for good measure. We made it. <laughs> now back to the castle. 
you should even a knowing look. It's time to settle things and this time you have an egg. <laughs> that does not sound convincing. <laughs> You walk by Maria Morevna again, your eyes meeting as you pass. Good luck! Cochet's Palace You enter the palace where everything seems to be made of gold. The mirror frames, the dishes, even the furniture. The spirits are denser and more numerous here. You hear Dimitri's twister voice booming in the distance. It smells like humans! The spirits retreat and you find yourself face to face with Crochet on his throne. Look at Crochet. He's a tall, skeletal old man wearing a tarnished golden armor and leaning on a large sword. And yet, you can see Dimitri's features somewhere underneath. Are you Crochet? The spirits murmur as if in anger Crochet roars. I'm King Crochet, the king of this ancient land, and tomorrow, king of the world. An icy chill runs through your body. It smells more like eggs, run eggs. You lift the egg above your head. Crochet huddles back onto his throne. The spirits are agitated, so I'm beginning to leave the hall. The old woman held you, of course. But wait! You could kill me. My spirit would once again wander this land and reform itself. You could also join me. I hate this civilized world, and I'm going to conquer it. You could leave it and report to me. Where is Vasilisa? Yeah. Where is Vasilisa? You strengthen your grip on the egg. Don't break the egg. There is no longer here. Where is she? My servants have taken her to the end of the world, in the farthest north, where she will be sacrificed to bring Kernamok, the black god, back to life. Should we try the first one just yeah. to ask? Yeah. Let's try. Queen of Russia, it's tempting. There you are. Your great Tsarina. Seal the bag given me the egg. You look at the egg in your hand as Crochet extends his, his for towards you. Queen of Russia, is this really possible? You who risk everything for just a few rubles, could this be your chance? Break, break, that break, fucking egg. break that fucking yes. egg. The time of kings in Russia is long gone. You break the egg by closing your fist and black blood runs down your, your arm. Crochet rises, fighting against death and collapses at the foot of his throne. A dark wind sweeps through the palace and in an instant, the glittering throne room becomes an abandoned old concrete building in the far north. In place of Crochet's body lies Dimitri's gray, less Dimitri's gray and inert. Ivan, check if he's still alive. Ivan crouches down beside him. Marreska. Dimitri, you are this and you wanted to kill me but no one deserves to die before the time will come back to bury you he's dead yeah I mean I presume that when they, when they say that he was great and inert that is, that is yeah. one of the symbols of congelation 
freezing. Let's return to the Firebird. Yeah. We are going to save Vasilisa. We return to the Firebird. Now we go farther north. Yep. You race over flat, roadless terrain that slopes down towards icy waters thick with icebergs. Celestial sheets of green and blue light play across the infinite northern sea. Ivan points to the left. Look! There's a village surrounded by a few pine trees next to the icy surf. Shabby houses of mud and wood twinkle with a reassuring light. Vasilisa's village. But you don't turn left, you swallow your worried tears and continue north. That was her village. Yep. Oof. Septentrion. Yep. You've reached the northern tip of Russia. The firebird glides over grey sand, smoothed by the waves, engulfed in silence and loneliness. You travel downwards. Look at the sea. It's an expanse of infinite black water, an ocean of nothingness. Huge icebergs float beyond the rolling waves like ethereal sh ships. In the north, a glowing wave of yellow, orange and green light flickers like an illusion. Look at the glow. Look at the glow? Yeah. There's some sort of coastline, but it's glowing. Is there land over there? Not normally, no. Okay, now look at the beach. Grey sand and pebbles, almost indistinguishable from the sea at night. Nameless, half dead plants. Who would have believed that the northernmost edge of the continent would be so gloomy, so plain? Look at the sky. Huge green aurora borealis stands overhead, almost close enough to touch. These great phenomena slowly converge on the bright glow in the sea to the north. Investigate it, bitch. Wait, we can also check the icebergs. A primitive barge topped by a palanquin eases between two giant white blocks rowed by 13 phantom sailors. Do you see that, Ivan? The girl must be there. And the firebird can dry can't drive on water. The sand crunches under your feet. You cast about for a solution. Ivan falls behind you. He curses. He tripped over a rock. Look at the rock. You strain your eyes in the darkness. It's a half buried piece of wood. Dig out the plank. Don't dive. Don't die. Yeah, I don't dive. Dive is dead. <laughs> you dig with your hands. What are you doing, Mariska? I'm trying to find a solution. And the solution appears. The plank is the end of a poor fishing boat lost out there. Ivan digs alongside you and you even find an oar in perfect condition. Yeah, that, that's uh, luck. Yeah. The sand grates against it, water sweeps in, but it floats on the black waters tossed about by the surf. You row in silence. You pass underneath great arches of ice where the freezing temperatures almost make the water sing. The glow brightens. Okay. Wow, look at this. The last point. Last point. I think when we would have, uh, when we dived in the water, we would have died. Yeah, I mean, the common sense. Yeah. <laughs> water full of icebergs, don't dive there. <laughs> city of gods. Have we, we are now at the city of gods. Look at this. It's a city of light, out 
blood and the water, the end of the world, the home of the lost gods. It's beautiful. Go towards the city. You, are, you row towards an engraved stone pier where fish made of light and evanescent phantoms grow. Some pass through you without even noticing. Ivan gulps, clearly terrified. Disembark. It's a huge stone block engraved with ancient symbols. From it rise structures of light, homes, businesses, and figures, both human and monstrous, nonchalantly roaming the settlement. It's dominated by a great altar, a long stone as large as a truck. The boat is at the pier, empty. They are somewhere in the city. I speak with inhabitants. Ah, uh, hello? No one responds. A strange creature of light, a man with arms so long that his hands touch the ground, turn towards you. He touches your hand, his huge arm goes through your body, and then he continues on his way through the city. Phantoms press towards the altar, you walk through them like mist. Huh, can I show you again? Yeah. At the top of a flight of steps, Cochet's ghost brandishes a sword of ice over Vasilisa's prone body. He wants to sacrifice her. Yep. Didn't we kill you already? Yes! But I really miss. I never really die. Especially when I'm about to become the chosen one of Chernobog, God of Night. Clearly it was worth the trouble. Who is Chernobog? He is the world's most ancient god. Slumbering since the dawn of time. Is so ancient that even I never knew him. But he is powerful, dark. My heart is as black as his. Vasilisa's sacrifice will bring him back to us. Don't you dare touch Vasilisa. If you do, I find a way to kill you all over again. And these threats. Fine words from someone I've already killed once. Crochet reflects for a moment. Well said. Maria Morevna plotted against me. I will deal with her. Do you want to be my general? We are talkers, old man. Chernobog is about to awaken. Make your decision with a clear mind, here, at the dawn of the night. You don't scare me? You don't scare me yet. You don't scare me. We'll put an end to your reign, you evil creature. We'll see about that. When Chernobog awakes, I'll become the king of Kings. I don't care about Chernobog, I just want Vasilisa. Stop this blasphemy, you ins I don't believe in your gods. How dare you? You're going to regret saying that. No. Crochet pierces Vasilisa's body with his sword, which passes through her like a ghost. A white swan dances at the end of the blade and flies overhead. Is this Vasilisa's spirit? But there's no time to think about it. No, did we choose the wrong option? Maybe. Like a nebulous mass, the sea swirls upwards an immense tsunami, speckled with constellations. 
Larger than the world itself, Chernabog, god of light, turns a huge terrifying eye in your direction. Look at Vasilisa. She is in animate dire tennis, almost transparent. You came so far only for it to come to this, your heart sinks. A huge god towers over you, but all you can see is her. Approach not this. Ignore the, 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 the big black mask. Climb the steps as the ghost prostrate themselves before the god of light. Vasilisa's body is cold and still. Take her in your arms as you fight back and sob. The god of night's eye is watching you. Broad as the sky and black as the void, a robe of stars and an eye that pierces through to your very soul. His shadow is freezing, an ancient, everlasting cold. I'm this man. Yes! Great God of Night! Come to us, your faithful servants! The fruits of Lord of Russia. What a beautiful world! Maybe the first one? No. Why not? Uh, five. We should fight? Yeah. Or maybe he has mercy with us. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's one. see. God of Night, I'm not scared of you. Grace, woman. We may differ in appearance, but we both have good hearts. Don't listen, Lord. It is I, Cushay. Who summoned you into this world? I read your heart and see that your intention was not for me to breathe the salt spray and heavy resin, wild game and stones. Speak! I want to conquer. I want you to. I, I want to see you conquer the world. I want to lead your armies. Chernabog is silent. Was it worth it to kill Vasilisa? You killed someone to summon me here. Lord, there was no other way. Waiting for, a waiting was another way. I waited for 10,000 Yes, Lord. Is 10,000 years really so long for a god? You possess none of the qualities that would make me your, you my equal. Mate, the first no. one no. God of Light, don't listen to Cushay. He wants to hurt everyone. Cushay shouts, but his words are muffled by the night. And you, short-lived girl, what do you ask for me? What? The most ancient of all gods is before you. He can do anything. So, what do you want? You're stunned. You've never even conceived of such a situation. I can ask for anything. Someone asks something of me that I cannot give. <clears throat> Bring Vasilisa back to life. Obviously. Bring Vasilisa back to life. You realize you're asking me for hardly anything? Have you no other desires? Lord! Stop speaking to her! She is on war of you! Chernobog breaths out and the resulting beef disintegrates Cochet's spirit into- <laughs> <laughs> Boom, bitch! 
Next it is Vasilisa's body that dissolves, leaving your arms in a haze of soft, soothing light. He was, he has been consumed by the dream, by hate. Someday he will be as virtuous as he has been weak today. That could take a long time in my opinion. I have time. I'm a god. Young woman, the gods do not answer your prayers because they are waiting for you to all become virtuous. I see the good in you. Does that mean you'll bring Vasilisa back to life? You'll find her in her village. He's waiting for you. Thank you. The fog and the love's view. Septentrion. The night has dissipated along with your memories and the huge benevolent hand deposits you on the shore. Where are we? Mm -hmm. Is it really long? I think so. It was neither as happy as a dream, nor as awful as a Let's go back to the firebird. The truck is there, parked on the frozen beach. The cab is cold. The rations are still in the, pa in the bag. We turn the ignition. It occurs. The fuel got the fuel box is full. Gosh. The fuel box is full. But how? Go I to Vasilisa. Yeah, but I can still question myself. Maybe we should have asked her about her money. Uh, you wanna go back? You shake your head. Let's go to the village. You drive along the shore as if you have known it your whole life. small houses we made if we are in the village. Yeah. The few small houses that comprise the fishing village stand at the edge of the shore surrounded by snowy pines lined with packed ice. You stop in front of a permafrost track never touched by a single tire. For three, three houses at least a lot of people I may say. And more than three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven at least. Villagers dressed in traditional outfits approach you with cautious curiosity. Yeah. It feels like we are in another century. They've been never seen a track. They have never seen a track or troubles. Rubles are great, but I'd give every ruble I have for warm fire and hot soup. They come towards you, speaking an unknown language. Does anyone here speak Russian? An old man approaches. I've traded with Russian before. That's a truck, right? You've never seen a truck before? Stay back. Some children dare to touch your truck, then climb on it, shouting. We've only seen planes in the sky, and sometimes very long, like ships on the horizon. Do you wish us well? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes, we wish you well. The chief embraces you. In the north, we are all brothers and sisters. I like that. I've never had a brother. Everyone crowds around you. You smile. You are kind. Life in the south is quite different. What were you trading? The Russians wanted to build a road. They needed a meat and fish to feed those poor workers. It was a sad time. I don't want to think about it. 
You think they were trying something valuable, Mareska? Cool, perhaps? You think of white tigers and keep the thought to yourself. We have brought you food. The chief asks you to repeat your words. He doesn't believe you and opens the back of your truck. He explains what the large pellet of goods is to the rest of the villagers and they stare at you unbelievingly. Adults and heads of families begin to sob. A woman embraces you. Ivan looks at you with satisfaction. You cry too, despite yourself. But how did you know we had lost all our reserves? Vasilisa came to find us. Incredulous, the chief makes you repeat yourself, then passes the news on to the others in his own language. Cries of jubilation ring out and tears of joy run. Vasilisa's name is repeated over and over again. It was her, she did it. Vasilisa is here, we'd love to see her again. Yes, yes, of course. Now the whole village will want to, t to thank her. Do you want to follow me to her house? Take us to Vasilisa. A little stunned that it could be this simple, that Chadabok really had brought the girl back to life, you follow to the old you follow the old man as he hobbles through the village. The old man follows a path that winds through the tall snow-covered pines surrounding the village. A silent procession forms behind you. After all, the old dear survival to Vasilisa, you would never have made this journey without her. You arrive before a great stone monolith carved with a sty stylized sworn. At its foot lie various offerings. The village gathers around it. Basilisa, Basilisa, protector of our village, we thank you. We'll survive the winter thanks to you. Wait, what? Examine the monolith. The swan motif is the same as the design on the girl's clothing. Vasilisa was this village garden goddess? But you saw her with your own eyes, you heard her voice, Vasilisa was real. Examine the other. A small animal sacrificed some flowers and then you see them. All rumors, the worn torn bills that Vasilisa had on you. The same bills are here, resting in the middle of the stone. The ancient Vasilisa is real.
magically going to forgive us? Actually, I don't even know if we should go to Zabotsk. If I don't have a truck anymore, let's go into business together. Uh, thanks. This region is dangerous, but it needs people like us. us. And we are not the only ones who are accepted here, accepted by this land and its gods. And Zabotsk? You used to talk about the Caribbean. I dreamed of something that would never have brought me happiness to end all that now. I give up the tropical blue seas in exchange for these endless white plains. My mother and Jorgen will kill me. each other. This life will make us happy. It's not money we are lacking, but everything that it could bring us. And we can find it here. Not just food, warmth or fuel, but adventure, responsibility, nature, spiritu spirituality, solidarity, recognition, love, selflessness. Grand sentiments and nothing in our pockets, that's what you're saying? Welcome to Russia, Ivan. We start a dishonest way and yeah. see what happens then. That would be funny. <laughs> then I would say that we end it here. Yeah. It was really fun to have this journey and to travel it together with you. Yeah, it was also f funny for me. I mean, <laughs> making the voices of everybody is, is funny. It hurts a bit the throat at the end, but it's quite funny because yeah. it gives them kind of a, another life. <laughs> I really like the voice you gave, that you really tried to give every character a different voice. Yeah, it was difficult for the men, I mean. <laughs> yeah, but, but you did a good job, I like that. Thank you. <laughs> and I hope we will see each other again all together. Yeah. In another video we can see it, uh, each other again. And thank you for watching and following our journey with the Firebird. See you in the next chapter maybe when we start another route with a dishonest way. Yeah, it will be quite fun. But until then, bye! Bye!